What's the word, y'all? Welcome back to Kenny for real. It feels good to say those words, man. It's been a minute since we've uploaded here, and that's been a few reasons. One, we were transitioning from um, the off season to like now, which is like the beginning of the regular season. So it wasn't really much to talk about. And the second thing is that I was transitioning from this channel being a part of a network to being independent, y'all. We 100% own this channel now. We 100% own this channel. Y'all don't know what that means if you don't make YouTube videos, but that is a big, big step in, uh, in this channel. So I appreciate y'all just holding me down in the last couple of weeks of me not uploading. But now with the season about to start in a week or so and things going down like today, it is time to get back on the grind on the Kenny For Real channel, man. We have to talk about this Supermax extension that Giannis signed, man. What is the number? What is, it was like $228.2 million over the next five years. And I think when you add the, contra the year of the contract that you already got this year, then basically... Giannis got his bag be sure to leave a like on the video subscribe if you are new um this is a hub of like me giving takes about the NBA talking about the NBA and then we built this community where we don't always agree with each other but we respect each other's opinions it's like what debates and conversation about subjective matters should be like it's not all name calling because we disagree so uh this is a community you do want to be a part of so subscribe so a couple months ago, when the beginning of the, um, of the offseason started, I made a video saying, Dear Giannis, do not sign the Supermax contract, uh, dot, 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 yet. Because I, I was a firm believer that if he would have signed a Supermax contract at the beginning of free agency or the earliest he could have got, that, that took the pressure off of the Milwaukee Bucks front office to make the necessary changes for the team to hit that next step. As we know, this team has been an amazing regular season team over the last couple of years, but they hit this wall in a literal sense where teams are building the wall for Giannis. And and the, the pieces around him needed to be better. Giannis needed to be better as well, but the pieces around him needed to be better and fit the play style when we got to the playoffs. And then they made the first move. First move traded for Drew Holiday included. Throwing Eric Bledsoe to the Pelicans and then getting giving up, I think, three first round picks and two swaps or two swaps and three first round picks, whatever it was. It was a lot of draft capital. Um, and and as good of a player Eric Bledsoe is, because I, I think that Eric Bledsoe gets the short end of a stick when it comes to when his name comes up in conversations. Eric Bledsoe is a very good NBA player, especially for the regular season. That's why, for me, the Pelicans are such a harder team to to really look at and say what their year is going to be like. Because Eric Bledsoe is good enough to help you win regular season games. But when you talk about when it's a postseason and teams can start scheming against a guy like Giannis who doesn't have a jump shot, Giannis needed his surrounding four players on the court to be knocked down shooters for that team to be successful, and Eric Bledsoe just wasn't that. And now they have a guy who Drew Holiday, I wouldn't say Drew Holiday's a knockdown shooter. He ain't coming off screens like Klay Thompson, Duncan Robinson, but he is a significant upgrade from shooting the ball than Eric Bledsoe. That is a W. Not to mention that he is a significant better defender. There was a clip that came out from camp where it was Eric, Bl I mean not Eric Bledsoe, Drew Holiday guarding Giannis, and Giannis got the bucket because he's two-time MVP, but but Drew Holiday was under that skin and playing that great defense. And Drew Holiday has the ability to defend higher than what Eric Bledsoe was. And another thing that Drew Holiday has over EB is the ability to give him the ball and say, let's get a bucket, Drew. And now the Milwaukee Bucks have another guy on the roster that's like that. Because Chris Middleton is like that to an extent as well, where like you can legitimately give him the ball on an isolation situation and he can create his own shot or create for others. And Eric Bledsoe didn't really bring that. But I was telling Giannis in that video that like I want you to stay with the Milwaukee Bucks because it would have been a travesty if Giannis left the Milwaukee Bucks to go to a team in, in, in California, to go to the Miami Heat, to go to one of these big market teams because at the end of the day, it seems like something we've seen so many times throughout history. And this was like maybe, this could, this could really save a lot of small market teams, the fact that Giannis resigned, honestly. Honestly, because if he would have went out to all these other teams or the bigger markets, it would have been detrimental to the rest of the smaller market teams around the league. This gives hope for the smaller teams like OKC. OKC is a smaller market team that has a thousand picks where they can hit on a draft, get a potential MVP, and be confident enough that if we do our, our we play our cards right, we could potentially keep him just because Giannis was able to do that. And what would make it better for the league? for the smaller market teams is if Giannis and the Milwaukee Bucks end up winning a championship. Now, I don't know if that's going to happen in the next five years. I'm already seeing people in my mentions, uh, the, the news just broke like three minutes ago, and I'm already seeing people in my mentions saying, L, wasting his career, things like that. And then I look at the profile picture, and it's a Miami Heat picture. I'm like, yeah, you're saying that because you wanted him on the team. You know, at the end of the day, I'm just so happy that another small market or one of the few small market teams were able to, to get their star player and keep him for a long term. Five-year Supermax contract. I mean, again, 
It's not set in stone because we've seen people sign extensions then a year or two into their extension. They're like, okay, I want out. But Giannis don't take me for that type. You know, you take take a look at where he started from in Greece and you hear a story about him, all of his brothers and his parents living in a one bedroom. And you got to think about these are like big kids. You know what I'm saying? These dudes turned out to be seven feet tall. So these big old kids living in a one bedroom or a studio apartment. Um, he comes from very humble beginnings. And for a team like the Milwaukee Bucks to take him when not a lot of people had him on the radar other than, I guess, the Bucks and Masai because there was a video that surfaced of Masai in the war room on draft night trying to trade up for Giannis. Can you imagine that? But for, for them to take a shot on him, give him the keys early in his career and allow him to develop into the player that he is, I'm sure that means a lot to him. That I'm sure that means a lot to him, and that's why he signed his extension. So now that all of this is done, I'm, I'm really excited about Bucks basketball and their offseason. Again, we talked about the Drew Holiday trade and how that makes it better. But when you think about Giannis not signing an extension and keeping that foot on the neck, they were this close to pulling off a Bogdanovich trade. And I don't think you do both of those deals without really knowing that Gian, this is what Giannis wants. You know what I'm saying? If it wasn't for Bogdanovich, like, I got different plans. I'm going to Atlanta. This team would be in a very, very amazing spot. I expect this team to be, of course, in contention again because they have been in the last couple of years, but be better this year than they were last year. And I hope, this is my big hope, is that this team comes to the realization that the, though the regular season matters, it doesn't at the same extent. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I think that some of the best teams in history, the ones that – that uh, we talk, we're going to talk about for years and years and years are the ones that I don't want to say coast because coast has such a negative connotation, but ones that realize that, OK, we don't need to go a thousand percent in the regular season. Let's save something for the playoffs. We talk about the Golden State Warriors that, that won championships um, after the 73 and nine season. Draymond Green came out, and said like the next year we were like, forget the regular, not forget the regular season. But we were like, it don't matter. We're going to win enough games to make the playoffs and hopefully get ourselves home court advantage. But we're not diving for balls and potentially putting ourselves in, in a situation where we're going to be banged up once the playoff comes around. And I want the Bucks to take that, that same thing. If this team is the worst regular season team this year, I'm not going to overreact because I would hope that this is a team that's like, we're ready to win a championship. We've been the number one seed. We've had the number one defense. And now let's focus on this chemistry stuff. Let's focus on these schemes that will help us win a championship. Because at the end of the day, we know the recipe to guard Giannis at this point. Now, hopefully with him having the surrounded piece around him, he can elevate his play and his teammates play will be elevated to to get over that wall, like the literal wall that teams build around him or to, to prevent him from scoring. Giannis is such a dominant NBA player, and I feel like people forget that um, because of some of the, the playoff woes. Like even when I watched the preseason the other day, just the, the, his ability to just barrel his way to the rim is is have not been seen very, very often throughout the history of this league. LeBron was able to do it when he was very young. Shaq was able to do it. But, like, those type of players are very, very hard to, to come across. So even when I talk about their bench, right, they made some some changes. They brought in DJ Augustine. This is a team that one of the reasons why they were so good over the past couple of seasons is because of that bench mob that they put together, where when Giannis was off the court, the team was still able to hold their own. And not a lot of teams in the league can say that. Usually the bench players are significantly worse than what the starters were able to do. But the Bucks have able been able to build a bench mob, and, and they had to reformulate that after all these trades and things. But bringing in a guy like DJ Augustine, DJ Augustine is a big-time player. I don't care what anybody says. When the moment is, is when his number is called for the moment, he'll be able to do that. And him to come off your bench is good. You you remember that Raptors series game one? Man was in his and ones and giving the Raptors work. And I know that was two years ago, but still, he can he can still do something like that. And Bobby Portis, a small sample of Bobby Portis is all you need for him to be good. As long as Bobby Portis is not out here getting 20 plus minutes a game, he's a good signing. If you could get 10, 15 minutes of Bobby P, you're good. And then they also get more wing defense when they brought in Tory Craig. So I really like what this team is doing, and I'm so happy for Giannis. I was seeing people also in my mentions saying that like if he didn't sign a Supermax contract, the Raptors, I mean, not the Raptors, but the Bucks may have had to relocate. I don't know if I want to go that far into it, but him signing does mean a lot for the team, and it means a lot for the league that, I mean, I bet Adam Silver's super happy right now. I just bet he, I bet he's super happy to see him staying. I mean, and though it would probably be cool for the league to see another juggernaut team get built if Giannis left and went to another team, I like parity. And as good as the Milwaukee Bucks is, it, them re-signing Giannis doesn't put them at the top of the, you know, top of the totem pole. I think this is a year that's going to be open. And that's exactly what we look for every single year as a fan. Uh, let me know what you think about the Giannis Supermax contract. 
Um, I feel like I'm forgetting stuff to talk about. But at the end of the day, Giannis is there to stay for the foreseeable future. And I think we should all be happy about that. Unless you had eyes on him signing with your team in free agency.